When I was first starting in business, I was running a small business. I had 12 employees. I didn't have a very big marketing budget at all. And I wanted to generate exposure for my business. And I didn't have a marketing budget. So then I phoned a TV station and yeah. I told the TV station my story and the TV station covered me. And that was it. And that was the starting point of just realizing how easy it was to generate free publicity. Every media outlet, whether it's a, a podcaster or a blogger or a radio station or a TV station or a magazine or a newspaper, they all make money from one area. They make money from advertising. So yeah. I, I just understood that the journalists need your help. And if you can pick up the phone and call them, you'll get through to them much easier than emailing them or getting news wires. I don't tell them what the story is. I just say, yeah. hey, do you have two minutes? I think I have a good story for you. Can we get on a phone call and talk about it? Oh, and yeah. they all want to know what the story is, so they say yes. This episode is brought to you by Venture Mastery, a platform bringing you the best talent from the entrepreneurial world. The platform which connects successful entrepreneurs to other business owners aiming to achieve success. If you've ever wanted to get more leads, more customers, and more revenue, if you ever wondered what successful business owners do differently, what strategies do they follow? How do they apply and execute? If you ever wondered how other entrepreneurs manage to scale their businesses, then you're in the right place. Our mission is to become one of the best educational resources for entrepreneurs who have tried and failed continuously. Anyone can build a business, but only 1% can master it, grow, scale, and prosper. We help you get into that 1% with proven methods used by seven-figure entrepreneurs from all around the world. We will cover all aspects of running a business successfully from a practical standpoint, covering everything you need to know about money and finance, leadership, sales, marketing, wealth management, mindset, and how to get you motivated day by day. So if you'd like to find out more about our programs, keep up to date with our upcoming online courses and one-to-one -one interviews, please follow us on either Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or other social media platforms of your choice at Venture Mastery, or check us out online at www.venturemastery.co. Thank you very much for, for joining my video podcast. You're welcome, uh, happy to. Let's um, do this. I, I checked out your profile and I found some really, really amazing stuff. Uh, if I compare to myself, you achieved 10 hundreds of times more throughout your oh, wow. career. You are the founder of CEO Have you seen the color of my hair? Have you seen, the color, have you seen the color of my hair? I've yes, you, that's part of the game because behind the success, there are some other things. You are, everyone is paying the price. It's just like in professional athletes, for example, who become uh, uh, top three in the Olympics, for, for example. It takes a long, long time. Yeah, it takes a long time. You get punches every day <laughs> in your face. Yeah. And so that that's 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 the game. If, if if someone wants to do this, there is no gain without pain. <laughs> that's 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 it. And okay. as I understand, you are the CEO and founder of COO Alliance. And I don't know, by the way, CEO comes from it's like similar to CEO, chief of officer, like chief yeah. operating officer. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's usually the second in command. Yeah. Uh, yes, you are the host of second in command podcast, as I understand. Correct. And um, an author, bestseller author, you have quite a bunch of books. I checked it out. And... TEDx speaker, as i seen, and you managed to build by the age of 35, as I remember, two companies achieving, I don't know, $100 million revenue. Yes? That's correct, And yeah. one of the biggest achievements probably was the on 800, you got junk or something like that, as I remember. 
you you achieved some outstanding results in within six years. That's correct. Yeah, we took one eight hundred got junk from fourteen employees to three thousand employees, and from two million to one hundred and six million in six years. Yeah, that's 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 huge. And you got coverage, media coverage, tons of media coverage, including opera, as I remember. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, we landed five thousand two hundred stories about our company in six years. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, almost unbelievable from my side. <laughs> we worked very hard at it. We we tried to figure out the systems and how to how to make it scale, and we figured it out. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And today's topic should, would be about free PR, and as long as I discovered you also have a book maybe if you have it on at your hand you can show it <laughs> i do i do have a copy of the book i'll see if i can find a um a picture okay. of it right now that i can show you i don't have it sitting beside me but i can okay yeah and today's yeah, it's called, topic it's called PR. To, yeah today's topic would be about free pr and i would let you continue this interview about this topic and we can exchange a few ideas whenever I feel that I have my opinion or I have some kind of remark. So let's let's see what 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 this actually about free PR. About free PR. So when I was first starting in business, I was running a small business. I had 12 employees. I didn't have a very big marketing budget at all yeah. and I wanted to generate exposure for my business and I didn't have a marketing budget. Yeah. And I remember reading the newspaper one day and seeing a story in the newspaper about this entrepreneur. Yeah. And I thought that's nothing special. He's not doing anything different from what I'm doing. Yeah. So I phoned the writer and I said, Hey, I think I have a good story for you. Do you have two minutes? And the writer said, sure, what's the story? And I said, I'm a university student. It was hard to find a job this summer, so I started yeah. my own business. Here's what my business is about. And they came and took a picture of me and wrote a story, and I was in the newspaper the next day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was easy. So then I phoned a TV station, and yeah. I told the TV station my story, and the TV station covered me. And that was it. And that was the starting point of just realizing how easy it was to generate free publicity. So yeah. I learned I learned some things very early on, which is that every media outlet, whether it's a, a podcaster or a blogger or a radio station or a TV station or a magazine or a newspaper, they all make money from one area. They make money from advertising. Yeah, yeah. And the only way they can have advertising is if they have very good content. Yeah, that's it. So they need your content. And if you contact them and say, hey, I have a good story for you, and you, you explain your story, chances are they'll give you a shot at covering it. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, stories are very great. And I think that uh, uh, publishers are, are researching for stories on a daily basis because they need content on uh, every day. They need content every day and they can't afford to go out and spend the time looking for the story. So they often yeah. wait for the stories to come to them. Yeah, yeah. More often than not, they're getting hundreds of news wires or hundreds of press releases or hundreds of emails. Yeah. So what I do is I pick up the phone and I call them on the phone. And then I get ahead of everybody who's sending them the emails. Even if I leave a voicemail message, I just say, hi, it's Cameron calling. Yeah. Here's my phone number. Do you want to see some raccoons? Do see the raccoons? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> for anybody, anybody who's listening, there are two raccoons in, in the yard, and they look like little bandits with their striped tails. They are damaging something around the building, or? <laughs> yeah, they're doing something around here. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But looking the, um, for free food. They are looking for free food. <laughs> that's right, for free food instead of free yeah. PR. So yeah. I, I just understood that the journalists need your help. And if you can pick up the phone and call them, you'll get through to them much easier than emailing them or getting news wires. That's what you know? I wanted to ask you, that do you find it more beneficial to call them rather than 
contacting them via certain kinds of channels or databases through emails or, or whatsoever. Yeah, like think about yourself for a second, Phil. Like how many emails or yeah, yeah, you know, messages yeah. you get a yeah. day? You probably get a yeah. hundred, a hundred text or email or LinkedIn messages a day, but then you probably only get four phone calls a day. Yeah. So I, I have a one in four chance of getting through to you on the phone. Yeah. And I only have a one in a hundred chance of getting through to you via email. And your first message is sort of a short message, something like that, just to raise your there. I don't tell them what the story is. I just say, hey, do you have two minutes? I think I have a good story for you. Can we get on a phone call and talk about it? And they all want to know what the story is, so they say yes. And they usually call you back or you are follow up with the... Sometimes sometimes they'll call me back. Sometimes I have to follow up with them. But again, if I follow up with them every few days, at some point they're going to take the phone call or at some point they'll call me back. Worst case scenario, I don't hear from them or worst case scenario, they say no. But when you do about 30 outbound calls a week, you're going to generate six or seven stories every month. Yeah. And and what channels are you using for this? Do you have some source thing to get these contact details? There's a couple of different... If it's not uh, a secret. <laughs> no, so it depends. And I'm not sure what channels exist in Europe. In North America, we use tools like Cision, which is part of PR Newswire. Or we isn't, use... isn't that H-A-R-O? Because that's what I know about. No, Haro, Haro is more a... Uh, and Peter Shankman, the founder of Haro, wrote the forward to our book, Free PR. Haro is more uh, journalists are asking if there's an expert to be on the story. So that's more you replying to their requests. Oh, I see. Cision is a database of all of the journalist information. Another one is called Muckrack. And there's, uh-huh. there's, so there's online databases that have all of the journalist information. I don't know what they would be in Europe, but there will be them in Europe too. Yeah. And, and- or you can just look them up on Google or, in, or you know on a search engine yeah. and, and find their contact information that way too. This is this has some kind of subscription based or is it free for any on? You know, it is usually it's usually subscription based. It's usually you know maybe two thousand dollars a year to have access to it. Yeah, and maybe your message regarding this your story of how you started would be for, especially for younger generation to, to have the courage and pick the phone and call. Because I think that in most of the cases, people are not willing, they are a little bit scared or something like that, that, that of re- getting rejected. Well, that's, that's why it's, you know, one of the skills that you have to develop as a leader and yeah. one of the skills that you have to develop as an entrepreneur is, is handling rejection. Yeah. You know, as, a, yeah. As, a, yeah. as an entrepreneur, you're going to get a lot of rejection. You're going to have yeah. bankers yeah. say no. Yeah. You'll have investors say no. You'll have customers will say no. The media will say no. Employees will say no. Yeah. You have to figure yeah. out how to sell past that to get to the yes. And, yeah. and when a journalist says no, it just means to me, it just means, well, I know they pick up the phone, so that's good. I have to give them a different story. I'll call them in three months with another idea or another angle. But yeah. no doesn't mean go away. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of my career in my early ages when I started my career. I started as a sales representative. I was selling cable TV and internet packages. So I was going door to door, knocking door to door. And I think that we who did sales we, we really know how this actually works. It's all about the numbers. You need to call or you need to uh, knock on the doors 100 times to get, I don't know, 10 or three or five. Exactly. It's like a funnel, right? Yeah. So if you, if you yeah. make enough calls, you'll get enough maybes. If you have enough maybes, you'll do enough really good phone calls. You'll get a couple of yeses. And yeah. then the more yeah. media coverage you get, every story that you land you, you add it to your website. So you have yeah. a media page on your website and all of those media storage are on that media page. So you get all the SEO links back to you. Yeah. And, yeah. and then when you exactly. contact the next media outlet, they see, okay, you've got two stories, you're credible. You've got five stories, you're credible. You've got 10 yeah. stories, right? You yeah. build off those. And another part probably 
would be what people think that a story actually is, because some people think that, okay, this is not an interesting story, but in the eyes of a journalist or someone else or the public, it could be a become a, a really great story. And it's usually, there's four different types of stories that everyone listening has for their company. The first story that everyone has is how they started their company. Yeah. Right? They, quit, they quit their job and started, yeah. they had a problem that they saw and they started, and it's really their entrepreneurial startup story. And that's yeah. all, that inspires others, it educates others. So that's a story that everyone has. Yeah. The second yeah. story is, is the overcoming adversity and it's the lessons from the edge. It's the trials and tribulations and the, when we fell and, and got hurt or when we almost failed, when we almost went bankrupt, when we lost our best customers, yeah. it's all the stories of how we almost failed and how we learned from those failures. And that's kind of the hero's journey story. Yeah. And yeah. the third story that we all have is how our product or our service helped our customer, right? And how, our product, like my COO Alliance, has helped grown COOs who have grown their companies and rebuilt relationships with their CEO. So yeah. like, there's always a story that you have there. And then and then the last one is really stories about your culture or, or how you've used technology. Yeah. So every every business has some stories. And the key is to just get good at pitching those stories. And then you can kind of go from there. And this is actually what I am also looking for, for example, especially with very successful entrepreneurs telling their own stories. And I had um, an entrepreneur a few days ago, uh, an interview with him. He immigrated from Russia to the United States and he had something like 470 bucks in his pocket. And he basically built up uh, an empire in the States. And he told, he told the, the good and bad part of his story. It was very, very interesting. Yeah, and the bad parts of the stories are often the ones that are the most inf- most educational and most inspirational because yeah. the, when you always tell the good, it doesn't necessarily connect with everybody. But but what connects yeah. with them is a when you failed. Yeah, and, that's that's and then, that's I and agree. What, what you learned from that failure. So there's yes. a lot of there's a lot of the press would really like to hear more of those stories and 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 they run with those. Yeah, I fully agree with that because uh, people are are seeking for these kind of stories or their attention is rising when when they hear that someone actually who is very successful so he had has actually more failures behind him than the successes. Yeah, there's good there's good stories from all those failures. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Cameron, anything special you want to you would like to share about this topic? I think I think what people need to remember for free PR is that every story you land, yeah, will not drive a lot of customers to you. It's what you do with that story that will help get you more business. So you have to share that story on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, and you share it on any of your social media profiles. You maybe you email that story link to your customers. You share the story with all of your employees. You share the story with your, with your suppliers and your lawyer and your accountant to build credibility. Yeah. You, add, you add the story to your media page of your website, <clears throat> which drives SEO. Yeah. And then maybe, yeah. maybe you buy traffic and you buy leads t- towards that story so that more of your potential customers see that story. That's when you get a lot of value. Yeah. And then it's story on story on story. The more stories that you get, all build into a bigger fire. Yeah, that's how you build your <coughs> own authority in, in a certain field or industry. Exactly. And publicity, because uh, in my opinion, publicity is much more important than, for example, advertising. Because advertising but- sounds... Of course, it depends what kind of advertising, but... No, but uh, it's true. Like, more people will believe the publicity than they'll believe the advertising, but it's you have to push the publicity in front of people because they don't normally see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's how can I get the story in front of more people is the key. Yeah. Okay, Cameron, I, I'm really grateful that it, it, I think it was extremely useful. Of course. And... All right, okay, Phil, thank you. Have a, have a, have a nice day. day. Thank Take you. Bye bye.
This episode was brought to you by Venture Mastery, one of the leading educational platforms for entrepreneurs aiming to grow and scale their businesses. Thanks for tuning in with me, your host, Phil Amory. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, where we'll get you updated with our upcoming courses, one-to-one interviews, and latest entrepreneurial success stories from around the world. I'd be honored to hear your thoughts and feedback. So please leave your comments and help us in producing even more engaging and valuable content for our next episodes. Thanks for joining us.